Hey there, everybody. How's it going? It's Brandon Brashears from the Veterinary Marketing Podcast in Maverick Digital Marketing. Hey, I'm really excited about this training. This is a complete tutorial, start to finish, on how to create a comprehensive content plan. So it's made so that it corresponds with this planner, which is my digital marketing planner. And it's a 12-month tool workbook that helps you to get really clear on what kind of content you should be producing, what kind of offers you should have, and how to create campaigns that put everything together and help you to get a really good plan that allows you to create the growth that you're looking to in your business. So I hope that you enjoy this training. In the link below, there's timestamps on where everything starts and stops. I cover everything on how to create a client avatar, to how to create a promotional ske uh, schedule and a promotional calendar, to how to create effective landing pages. And so it's a really um, solid training. If you enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. And at the end of the video, I talk about a special offer where I can give you one-on-one -on -one help if you buy the planner and leave me a positive review on Amazon. So thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions, please be sure to comment below. Let me know how I can help. And I hope you enjoy this video. Welcome everybody. Today we're going to talk about how to create a digital marketing content calendar and calendar plan specifically. So this is going to be a comprehensive plan. We're going to talk about content. We're going to talk about evaluation type offers, and we're going to talk about conversion offers. So we're going to get pretty in depth here. It's going to be pretty exciting. So this is being recorded live and it'll also be available as a recording. So if you have any questions or comments as we're going through here, be sure to type in the chat. Let me know what your questions are. I want to mention that this is specifically designed around this content planner, which I have right here. You can see in this little video here. Um, and this planner is available for purchase on Amazon for $20. If you um, want to get it, be sure to um, let me know and I have a special offer. If you buy it and leave me a review, I will do a one-on-one -on -one strategy session with you. I'm trying to get more reviews on Amazon, so I would really appreciate it if you gave me an honest review, hopefully positive. So today we're going to talk about how to create a digital marketing content calendar. And this is one of the biggest, uh, most important things that you can do as a small business or as a digital marketer. So if you want to figure out how can you be more successful with digital marketing, or if you've ever said to yourself, you know what, the kind of marketing that I'm doing right now, it just wasn't working or it hasn't worked or social media doesn't work for me or, you know, insert whatever platform doesn't work. The truth is, if your clients are and customers are, are there spending time on that platform, then it absolutely does work. And you just have to change your strategy and also change the way that you measure and, and track your progress as well. So we're going to talk about all of that. But what, have, what a content plan can do for you in your digital marketing is really transform the way that you approach your work and also how to create offers and, and everything. So this is the most important part of the digital marketing. This is the planning, the research, and, and putting together a strategy so that you can use the principles that we're going to go over to really target any platform out there. So this is going to be a really in-depth, comprehensive um, platform. If you ever need help with anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm always happy to help. And uh, let's get into today's training. So my name is Brandon. And a little bit about me, why should you care or why should you listen to me? So I do digital marketing. I just got started uh, over a decade ago when I just started learning. I literally picked up the only book that I found, which was Digital Marketing for Dummies and started there and have been working on it ever since. I've worked in industries from real estate, loans, private equity funds, um, auto parts, veterinary hospitals, uh, veterinary practices, um, human uh, nurse practitioner practices, like pretty much everything under the sun. Um, software, I haven't done gambling or things like that. Um, there are a lot of you know crypto and, and other types of niches that I haven't done, but I've done a lot of different niches and industries and um, I've managed, well, currently I manage right around $50,000 a month in ad spend um, of my clients. I help to build complete strategies for, for businesses. And so um, I take a look at everything that they're doing and I help them to figure out a strategy, create all of the assets that we need in the content, and then implement that strategy so that we can create sales and customers and basically grow businesses. So um, that's a little bit about me right now. I, my my um, company's name is uh, Maverick Digital Marketing. And the uh, clients that I help to service, we, we do all kinds of marketing. And 
We spend money on primarily Facebook, Instagram, and Google AdWords. So uh, if you are somebody who needs help or would like more information on how to create a, a comprehensive strategy, happy to help there too. Um, I'm going to give you some info at the end here on how you can get more help if you need some. Otherwise, you're going to be able to use this info to really create your own strategies here. We're going to talk a lot about principles and not just like the specific tactics, but I'm going to tell you why you should think about things a certain way, in my opinion, and how to really grow your business with digital marketing. So again, we're going to hopefully try to use the, the strategies here to no matter what platform you're doing or no matter where your customers are spending time, you're going to be able to hopefully grow your business with what we're talking about today. So I think that in order to really get the most out of a plan, we have to really figure out what is the end goal and start with the end goal in mind first. So here's kind of what we're going to cover in this training. We're going to figure out how to set baselines, establish goals, how to define clients. We're then going to talk about how to define offers. We're going to then talk about building a supporting content strategy, which is like a comprehensive content strategy. And then we're going to use what I call the three plus one strategy. So this will tell you what to be promoting and how to promote things in order to not seem like you're just constantly selling. Um, and it lets you really mix up your offers and mix up the way that you approach your offers so that you always have something to talk about. Because I think that for a lot of people, that is kind of the, um, the most like maybe frustrating part about digital marketing is, you know, what should I talk about? What should I be working on? Um, really, what should I do is the, is the thing that, that is um, definitely, sorry, the, the question that I get a lot. All right, so I'm just going to, so let's jump into the first step, which is setting baselines. Now, the baselines that you're going to set for your brand and your company's marketing is going to be different at each stage of the funnel. And I think it's important that we talk about each, st each stage of the funnel here because um, you measure and, and track different KPIs at different stages of the funnel. So what is a funnel? So in, in order for somebody to do business with you and your brand, they basically have to go through three steps. And it depends on kind of what stage they're at. If they're ready to buy or something, there's always exception, exceptions to the rule here. But you typically have awareness, evaluation, and then conversion. So somebody can't do business with you until they're aware of you. They can't, they, once they're aware of you, they evaluate you. And then once they evaluate you, hopefully they convert. And then it's hopefully reconverting them over and over again. So if you've ever said to yourself, or if you've ever heard somebody say, hey, I do Facebook ads, it doesn't work. There's no ROI in Facebook ads. Typically the reason why there's no ROI in Facebook ads is because they're not making offers, right? They're actually just working on posting content. They're posting pictures of cats and dogs, and they're not actually saying, hey, we have this special going on this week. Come in, and they're letting their customers know about the products and services that they offer. And so if you're never making offers, you're not going to see any ROI. You're just going to be putting out stuff that is interesting to engage with, but ultimately is not going to drive ROI. So that's why it's important that we set baselines for each one of these stages of the funnel. We need to know, first off, what kind of baselines we should be measuring and then also what kind of content types are corresponding with these. So when you're creating a plan, these are the different kinds of content and the different tools that we're going to be implementing to either drive more awareness, to drive more evaluation, or more conversion. Alright, so with the awareness, the types of, of content that we have, that's things like blogs and podcasts, social posts, infographics, photos, videos, primary research, newsletters, and pictures. So again, we're not measuring ROI in this stage of the funnel because um, we're going to be doing a lot more just general kind of offers and things. Um, and so it's, it's things that are far more in kind of terms of like just getting the word out. So the way that we measure this is off awareness, so branded search, people typing in your, your name of your company. That's one, one way that you can measure um, awareness. You can also measure retargeting list growth, which is a great way to measure how many people are engaging. So like if you're using uh, specifically like your engagement audiences and, and the numbers of people that are inside of your engagement audiences. You can also do site engagement rates. You can also do number of inbound links. So if you're creating content that's really high quality, you'll typically be getting links from people 
Um, you will also measure shares and comments and things like that on social channels. And then also traffic by channel. So if you start to create great content and you're posting that to your Facebook page, uh, you're going to see more traffic from Facebook, right? So that's an awareness type baseline that we're going to be measuring and, and tracking. After that, we have evaluation. So we have the types of content that we're going to be creating and planning around our lead magnets, uh, case study and, and education. It can also be stories um, and resources like cheat sheets, toolkits, stuff like that. Um, you can even list together and lump together different things. It's a really great type of product to, uh, to create there. It's simple to do. Um, you can also have software, um, discount or coupon club, a quiz or a survey, and then also webinars and events. So um, the, the way that we measure evaluation is we're going to measure specifically list growth inside of your email marketing software. We're going to measure the lead growth, the number of leads that are coming in. So leads and lists are different, right? So if you have somebody that, for example, is signing up for a newsletter, that's a list growth. That's de definitely in the evaluation stage, but it's different than somebody who signs up because they want a free trial or they want a new client special or something like that. Once they get into that funnel, they're then a lead. Um, initial customer acquisition, that's typically in digital marketing, that's called like a tripwire or a low cost low barrier to entry, very low risk product that you can hopefully get them in the door. It's kind of like a no brainer. They should buy it right away. And then also segmented retargeting. So people who've engaged with any one of these content types. And I think that you should be doing different kinds of uh, engagement lists inside of Facebook and, and Instagram and um, also Google AdWords based on how people are, are acting in your content. And then we have conversion, which is the most exciting stage of the funnel because that's where you're measuring ROI and at this stage we're we're going to be using um, content types like demos and trials and customer stories and product comparisons events and webinars and mini courses so we're just trying to drive people into the funnel we're actually trying to generate revenue and we're tracking revenue that's that's created here and so the things that we're we're tracking are here are the increased bottom of funnel leads, so how many customers we're generating, um, how many customers we're retaining, the hopefully increasing their, their frequency of buying, um, growing these retargeting lists of actual customers and uploading them into Facebook and Instagram and Google, and then also measuring average order value. So if we can if we can do a few things, right? If we have there's two ways to, to make more revenue. We can get more customers or clients, and then we can also sell more to customers and clients. You can sell more in two ways. You can sell to them more frequently, or you can increase your average order value. So different kinds of offers and content help you sell more to your current clients. If you're looking for you know ways to increase your bottom line, you're going to want to create content and offers built around the bottom of the funnel. That's what's going to drive ROI. It makes total sense. So if you're not considering or if you, if you want to have some kind of measurable impact on the number of clients and customers you have coming in, then it's time to really start working on conversion. So I suggest starting out here and then working your way up the funnel. Now that depends though on your current situation because you're gonna have to know what kind of content do I have created? What kind of um, offers do I have? How can I drive these people into my business? And it, it's going to really depend on what you have created in your specific situation. So I wish there was an answer that was like super simple to say like ev everybody should do this first, but it really depends on your situation. Hope that makes sense. So thinking about the goal here, what do we want to do? How are we going to get somebody from being a stranger to a customer or a client? We need to make a specific and measurable goal here. Um, and so in order to do that, let's see here, we're going to be um, working on the, again, typically the bottom of the funnel is the start. So it depends on what you're looking to do, right? So we're gonna be selling more to current customers, possibly, hopefully be increasing revenue, um, so increasing our average order value, increasing the number of leads that we have coming in, um, increasing awareness to offers, but really we're starting with the end in mind. And um, 
you know, what is your goal and, and how can you get you to that goal? And that's really what we're going to be talking about here with the content plan. But it's important that we know, you know, specifically what we're able to measure at each stage of the funnel. So um, as, you're, as you're thinking about this right now, and um, with, with that goal of generating more clients and um, bottom of funnel type metrics, we're going to work out and figure out what kind of offers we should create for that and that in that we're going to have specific goals so if, if you say to yourself I just want more clients that is a recipe for failure because you're not going to have a specific measurable goal that you can point to and improve towards right so if you say I want to have six new clients every week coming in from my digital ad that's very specific it's got a time frame attached to it and so that's one thing that needs to be measurable and we can say, hey, we had three new clients tonight. So that's not six, and here's what we did. If we do more of this, we should get more and be able to scale it. So when we have goals that are specifically measurable, though, you're able to adjust, maybe make more um, ads or offers or you know, figure out what is the next step to be the one that runs this. So I think the very first thing that we're going to think about though is we're, if we want new clients coming in the door we need to figure out who this marketing is for because this is what everything depends on. This is going to be the content that you create, it's going to speak to these people, um, the offers that you create, it's going to speak to their pain points. So this is where the client avatar client persona comes in and so inside of the planner we have the client avatar and the client persona that let's walk through here. It's right here. The ideal customer client avatar worksheet. This is so important. So all I think that probably in general most uh, campaigns either fail or succeed really at this step, which is figuring out who you're selling to. If you say I'm just going to sell to everybody in my town, and that's it, unless you're selling like a commodity, like you're just going to have a serious problem in reaching these people. And so um, you'll typically end up getting clients that are not ideal that you don't really like working for, with and for. So um, with the client avatar worksheet, I like to actually give the person a name. So I think of like my, my best or favorite clients and um, I actually give them an actual name. Like if I'm going to be marketing towards, uh, like let's say for a veterinary hospital, um, we're gonna name them and then like actually think of them like a person because it's helpful when you're thinking of a specific person. So if you can think of a person at your client and that's a client in your business that you actually would like to duplicate and create more of, because I know everybody has those kinds of clients that they love to work with and that are great clients that you they come in, they do everything you say, they are super compliant and they just love working with you and it's a joy to work with them. So if you're gonna do paid ads or you're gonna create content work with those people because they're the best. So we're going to go through everything from their name, their age, their gender, marital status, how many children they have, where they live, what kind of house they live in if you want to get that detailed. Um, if you can imagine yourself in the shoes of these, these people specifically though, it really is helpful because you're going to be able to create so much more unique ads that really speak to them. Um, that we're going to talk about number of pets they have, what kind of pets they have. Um, it doesn't, I, I would say that that's regardless of if you're a veterinary practice or if you're any other kind of business, it's going to be super important. What their annual income is for the household, um, what level of education they have, which is also super important when you're creating um, messaging and marketing, what kind of language you're going to be using with them, and then anything else that you can think of that's going to be significant. And so, what are their main goals and values is the next question. And so we're thinking about goals and values. If we're using a veterinary practice, for example, your, your clients and your best clients, they probably should have the goals and the values. The goal is to be a responsible pet owner. And like, what does that ultimately mean? That's going to translate into their values where they, they treat their, their pet like a member of the family. They really care about making sure that their pet has great quality of life, that they are well taken care of, that they have the best of 
everything possible, right? And you have a scale. You you know the, the pet owners that are like throw some food outside in the backyard, or th this is my baby and she sleeps with me every night and I would do anything for her, right? And so there's that scale. So the, that is the value scale that you're going to be going off of. And if we're creating content, we want to be targeting people that are going to be hopefully speaking at those those groups of people that we're going to be wanting to target here. Um, it's important to know where you think they get their sources of information. So this is actually super helpful if you go into the Facebook profile and you start to look at the things that they like. You can see what they like as far as um, sources of information. So books and magazines and blogs and websites, conferences, any gurus that they follow. So like, where are these people getting info from? And you can really understand and target people based on these interests inside of Facebook, which is great. And if you have groups of people that you want to avoid, then you're going to want to make sure and also put that there because that's equally as important, right? If you're having to constantly fight certain clients who are like, you know, I heard on this website that this is the way I should do it and that, you know, you're, you're wrong, basically. And especially in the veterinary industry, that's super, super important. So knowing what to avoid is equally important for sure. And so the challenges and the pain points, this is really what you need to think about. And you can go through reviews and, and things like that to find out really what are the pain points that you're solving. So for example, if they are a person who works late hours and they are super busy, let's say you're targeting um, a, a mom who has three kids and also works, right? So like super busy, not enough time, and so ultimately she doesn't want to be spending time sitting, waiting for appointments, and um, she doesn't have any time to waste, it's very valuable, and that's her main challenge. And the pain point is that she feels she feels um, guilt and regret that she's not spending more time with her family, and so if you can solve that by being con convenient and fast, you're going to help to really solve that pain point, right? So the challenge is different from the pain point, and the pain point is what they're feeling, and the challenge is why they're feeling the reasons for that. And then objections and roles in the purchase process. So sometimes if you're selling things like loans or you know higher priced products, sometimes you need additional people to make the decision. And so if that's the case, your content should be built around that kind of a situation. Um, understanding what objections there are. Again, this is really important if you know where they're getting info from because a lot of times if you have content or um, you know, if, if you know exactly what they're going to say and what they're thinking you're going to be able to um, meet those objections before they happen and a lot of times the content that you produce can be built around those objections and answering those questions but you don't have to spend your time running through those so this is like the most important part of, of marketing is doing your research finding out who you're talking to and really what is the pain that you're solving so that you can really drive more clients in and be effective. A lot of times businesses talk just about their features and about the product and that is not um, ultimately what sells the product. I'll give you some examples. So I do um, marketing for a healing education product that is uh, Dr. Brett Beckman sells CE courses to veterinarians and he teaches dentistry and so you think okay that's pretty straightforward they need CE like that makes total sense but ultimately what we're doing is we're targeting a very specific person who is afraid of veterinary dentistry because it's just they didn't get the right training they didn't feel prepared or they feel overwhelmed if they get somebody who has a, a serious condition they they feel like they might not know the answer and so they just ultimately are afraid right and so that's very different than selling CE that should be very straightforward right so we're targeting that pain point of this is something that, that can be um, considered scary and you're, you're not confident how can we address that and, and give you more confidence so that at the end once you've gone through this course you're gonna feel way better about your skills and um, not want to just refer it off Another example is 
to sell fender flares for a company that does fender flares for uh, Dodge Challengers. And you think, okay, that's pretty straightforward. Somebody just wants a Challenger fender flare for their car so that they can fit wider, wider tires under their car. But really what they're looking for is more status because their car looks different from all of their friends when they go to the car clubs. Their car looks different and it looks interesting and so they get status from that. And so we're selling that status, not just the actual product. And understanding our clients and what they actually want is the key to getting that. So if you're selling like additional care or if you're selling that you treat the pets like family, um, and you know, it, it really depends on what your angle is going to be in appealing to these, these target avatars. I can't stress how important this is in our job. It just is so, so important. But once we know that too, we're going to know who they're following. We're going to know who they like, what they feel, really what their before and afters are. And this, I can't stress enough. If you're not sure what to, um, what to talk about or what to create, talk about their before and after. And um, it's really as simple as that. What, what are they feeling before? Do they have this problem? And you can create all kinds of content around this. And then what they'll find and discover, and then um, what their after looks like. There is uh, a, a good recipe or a, an example of this. It's the um, uh, feel, felt, and then found. I think it's in that order. But you'll say like, hey, you know, do you ever feel this way? Are you ever nervous about your dog's teeth, for example, for let's talk about dental, right? Do you ever feel nervous about your dog's teeth? I've talked to dozens of pet owners that they just feel like their dogs are you know, constantly having the worst breath ever. Their dog, their teeth look like they're they're rotting and decaying. They just don't know what to do about it. They don't know how to take care of it, and they felt that way. And so you're validating how they feel, the concern that they're feeling. Tons and tons and tons of, of pet owners that I have talked to felt that way too. And what they've found is that when they come in for an exam, we do these things, you know, X, Y, and Z, we're going to make recommendations based on this, and here's what they end up seeing, right? So talking about what their before and after is, and really focusing on those pain points and, and the anxiety and the fear that they're feeling and giving them um, something that is you know, not, not over-promising, but absolutely what's in line with what they can expect. And that's super helpful. So we have to again think about how can we use this from their journey. So taking them from the before and then the problem and solving that problem and overcoming whatever it is that we've decided we're going to be focusing on. That's how we're going to use that for the, the journey. And then we're going to target them with the different things that we found here. So um, using the different interests, the different demographics that we talked about and creating marketing that's speaking to them with content um, and offers that speaks to those, those groups of people is going to help us be a lot more effective. And then along with this, we can find out who we're going to partner with. So when we're thinking about these people and where they're hanging out and what they're spending time doing, we can find other people that are in similar businesses, but not necessarily the same thing, um, who we can then partner with to hopefully do joint ventures and other things, if that's something that would be beneficial. But I think that that's probably one of the most underutilized kind of forms of marketing, partnerships and joint ventures. Everybody needs marketing, and there's a lot of times when there's complementary businesses that you could offset your lead costs and things by partnering with other people. Especially if you understand how to do this, um, then you're going to be able to really drive value for people that would want to partner with you. So we're going to define the offer and talk about, since we're starting with the end in mind, what is it that we're going to start out with, and ultimately walk back from there and figure out what kind of content to build around this. But it's ultimately most important to start with the offer. What is it that we're going to be selling? What is it that we want the clients to be doing? How do we want them to do this? And define the offer. I like to think about needs versus wants because needs are things that um, are a lot easier to sell. It's difficult to give have people get desire for things. Um, you know, it's like Inception. Can you make somebody actually want to buy something? You probably can. Uh, but it takes a long time and a lot of work. So finding groups of people that actually need stuff versus people that just maybe want stuff or that you're going to try and put a want into their mind 
that's that's really really difficult. And the the web is so big, you can use it to. I mean, there's people who do anything you can think of. So you can find people who need what you have to offer through targeting. But going through the reviews is really really helpful. So finding out what people need, especially when they're unhappy, they'll talk about things that missed the mark for them, and I think that those are actually super valuable. So they'll talk about like how they had to wait, or the product showed up, it wasn't how they expected, maybe the price wasn't what they expected, maybe it was inconvenient, you know, finding out really what the pain points are and what they would want in order to fix it um, is, is really, really helpful. But really people buy things only for a few reasons. Um, People will say that they want value, meaning they want to get a lot for their money, but that's actually not true. <laughs> a lot of times people will say that they want the highest quality of things, but really they just want price. And that's the goal. Now there's ways to offset price. Um, like people that, that buy Ferraris, for example, they're not buying Ferraris because they're you know, um, a thousand times more high quality than like a Toyota Corolla, for example which is a great car, right? It doesn't work a thousand times better than that. They're buying it because of status that they get, and the perceived status of the car. And so really people are buying things because the price is good. It meets their needs for the price that they're going to be paying. Um, there's status. Uh, it's easy to use. There's fear involved that it's going to help them overcome. It's going to be convenient for them. Or there's just time savings involved. And, uh, People will make these emotional decisions and justify them with logic, and it'll typically be for one of these reasons. Um, so we got to think about the offer that we're going to do. So price uh, is a good one. Let's talk about that first. So if we're doing offers that are related to price, that's things like free trials, uh, new client specials, uh, like monthly specials for a specific service or a product, or you know, things that are just really limited. When I'm doing price, I don't like to set up price as the only factor that is going to determine whether or not people do business because you're going to be attracting a lower end type of client. And so if you're doing price, I like to really give it a reason why the price is lower. So you're going to say something like, hey, we're going to turn you into a customer for life. So we want to give have you give us a shot. We'll give you one free exam, the first one's free, let us earn your business. And people like that kind of messaging because people like rooting for underdogs, right? So if you're saying like, hey, I'm going to earn this and you let me prove it, people say, sure, I'll give you a shot for sure. That is the kind of rationalization that lets people understand that this is only, it's a limited offer, there's fear of missing out, and you need to jump in and, and take advantage of this. And once you do, you're going to be so happy that you're going to want to come back and pay full price. And that totally rationalizes that emotional decision for sure. Um, status is really, really important. So people will buy really expensive things just because it gives them additional status. So if you wanted to have a premium group of people in your business, you can create a different product for those people that's more expensive, but also gives them the, the benefit of additional status. And, you know, let's, I'm just thinking of some ideas here. If we're using a veterinary practice as an example, you could create a VIP club where there was like no wait time or something, right? And I don't know how you would do that, but if they wanted to be perceived as extra special and get special treatment, I don't think that that would be a necessarily a good idea, but it's just an example that you can think of some ideas. Um, some ease of use. Now that's super important to eat. If, if you're going to be selling anything, Right. This is if you think about products specifically built around like parenting and babies. There's so many products that are built out in offers because they're they're easy to use, and you're going to spend more money because it is convenient and, and easy to use. The other thing um, is fear. So if you are trying to drive specific action, and I'm not saying to be like sensational, but to talk about things that are serious and sometimes scary. So in veterinary medicine, like heartworm is a great example, and, and things that are very serious and should be taken seriously, and sometimes it is the fear of this thing happening that you're going to have to use to sell it. 
convenience, again, it's, it's like ease of use, so it just helps people to, it's, it's easier for people to take offers. So like if you had a, a, let's say you wanted to do some LinkedIn marketing, and you're going to be targeting busy professionals that are making large incomes. Things have to be convenient for these people, and if they are more convenient, their time is more valuable. You don't want to be spending time waiting. Like one thing that I can think of as an example is for convenience and time savings, these both link together. But like I have on my car, I have a, a warranty that's a manufacturer warranty. But if I go to the dealership, I know that it's going to take at least one day, maybe two days, just to get things done. But if I go to the place down the street, they'll take it right in. I can get home quick, save so much time. Most of the time, I don't even take it to the dealership. And so um, that's an example. If you had, for example, if you're going to go through this uh, pet stuff, if you had a, a drop-off process that was super easy, that you had the person drop off their pet in the morning, um, you did an exam whenever you could throughout the day, and then you did an updated like telemedicine uh, consult with the owner explaining the results and saying what would you like to do type of a thing. That would be some kind of convenience, especially if it was like a single professional person who works tons of hours, doesn't have the time. And then when it is the weekend, they don't want to spend the time sitting in a, a veterinary office, right? It's thinking about what it is they need and what they will pay for it. So let's talk about planning the assets. And so when I say assets, I mean everything from posts to landing pages to ads and things like that. We are going to need different types of content for these different stages of the funnel. Awareness, evaluation, conversion, and then hopefully reconversion. So writing and creating content for awareness, that should be things that are super light and easy and get good engagement and helps to segment the audience. A great example of this is for veterinary practices, pictures of, of patients who are coming in. It helps you to get more people aware of you. It lets you tag the um, different people that are coming in and get more awareness through things like that. Once we have that, we have evaluation, so we need to create pages and landing pages for offering different kinds of guides and info and really building out content that's segmented around the offers. So again, we talked about what is the offer that we're going to be doing. Um, I would say start with the offer in mind so that you already have probably audiences of people that you're going to be marketing to. So figure out what your offers are and then we'll kind of back out from there. And then reconversion, what can we do to sell people more products and services? What other offers can we do who are already customers, people who know I can trust you, what can we do to sell them more? Um, so we're gonna walk through the ad trackers, the campaign trackers, and the calendars here in just a second. But there's really three kinds of content um, that we have here. I'm trying to get things locked here. So we have promotional content, educational content, entertainment, and offers, really. So promotion is things like, hey, we have we have a post coming out or we have content that we're putting out and we're putting that kind of content out and we're, we're driving people to websites, driving people to email lists, we're, we're actively promoting our activities that we're in. Um, and I think that promotional content is very important. It's important that you're driving people to take action that helps to train them to get used to the offers that you're creating. So, when people begin to engage with your brand and they're clicking on websites or they're commenting or they're signing up for messenger or they're signing up for an email newsletter driving people to action no matter what that next action is you should always understand like hey i want this person to be liking my facebook page or following my instagram page and you know every single piece of content that you're creating needs to have an objective that hopefully drives people to the next step in your relationship so we have promotional, we have educational, right? Where we're just teaching and walking through that this is the kind of content that is going to help to sell your your offers, basically. So we're, we're driving people to become educated to the point where they can make the decision to buy from us. And these are typically frequently asked questions, um, questions that are considered buying questions, right? That people need to understand before they will feel comfortable to make a decision to do business with you. And then we have entertainment offers and have not any entertainment content. And this is just really for fun. It helps to build relationships and allows people to be a lot more relational with you. So it needs to be interesting or entertaining or helpful. 
and then we have offers um, which are the actual hey buy this and you need to have that kind of a post or content out there so that people will actually buy from you if you don't have those you're not going to have ROI so a lot of people are uncomfortable with the offers they just want to be posting content and they want to be educating and they want to be enter entertaining but if they're not posting content then if you're not posting offers you're not going to have ROI Let's jump in here really quick here to the planner and walk through these different sections of it where we go through. So we have the client avatars. Again, this is really important. We have the landing page checklist, which also is really helpful. So figuring out your offers and how you're going to get people to take action in your offers. Um, typically landing pages are great for, you can also use this for a sales page checklist, but each one of these steps is, or elements is very important in creating converting pages that will drive new clients and clients into your into your business. So we have market call out. So we need to be able to quickly identify who it's for. We need to be clear and concise so that people understand what they're for immediately. You only have a few seconds um, typically to, to capture people and to let them understand what you're talking about and how to take the offer. It needs to be easily understood. We need to have a compelling headline. And when I say compelling, it needs to convey benefit and value right away. The click to call to action needs to be above the fold. This is so important. Mobile, it needs to be above the fold on mobile um, because everybody's doing mobile these days. Then we need to have contrasting button color, so it needs to stand out because if you have everything blend in, it doesn't look like you know what the next step is. So having that button stand out is great. Um, Limited navigation. Again, we're not trying to send, like if you send traffic directly to your homepage, you're going to have so many options, you're going to ask the person who's there to do too much work. So it needs to be very specific. Visual cues whenever you can. So having arrows and driving your eyes to the different sections that they need to be seeing is really, really important. I like to have a hero shot, that's, um, and that's typically the image that you use as the background. I'll show some examples here in just a second, but that is important in just really setting the tone for the page, who it's for, lets them understand that it's professional and um, it, it makes them feel at ease. As little form field as possible is always important. It'd be great to get their name, phone number, email address, social security number, date of birth, but it's not gonna happen, especially if you're doing new clients. So as few fields as you can, figure out what is absolutely necessary with most like if you're giving away of something of value you can ask for more but if you're just giving away a newsletter sign up you don't need to have their address on that unless you're going to mail them something and so if you are going to be asking for physical address on things you need to give a reason for that so if you want to have a like for example a low cost physical product that you're going to mail them that makes sense like hey i'm going to mail you something if you want to get this in the mail i need to have your address um, otherwise, they're going to say, what do they need this for? They're going to start sending me stuff. I don't want that. And then they'll just abandon it. Source congruency. So the ads should look like the landing page or the offer page. And the content that you're putting out should be congruent. And that includes your brand consistency. So having things with your logo, your font types, your brand colors, all of that should be there. Social proof is really, really important. I don't know if I mentioned that, but having testimonials is really important. And then sharing and enabled so that people can share this and you'll get more and then visible privacy terms of service that's just a requirement for ad campaigns um, on Facebook and Google Ads so I have a an example here right we have this um, it says your logo here right? I would put a logo right here but this says new client special here's the offer in rewards voucher that can be used for client service right that's the call out here's the benefit that you get right away people that click on the ad and the ad would be congruent with this as well I use Disney Land as an example we have the hero shot right it's an iconic thing people remember um, I put an actual map of Disneyland people want to know the who what where why when and how so again here's the, the call to action above the fold there's the form fields as little as possible that we're using the button is contrasting and does stand out I think that probably if I was doing this, that the background image here is a little bit distracting. Um, so this is just an example, but again, we have branding throughout. We've got logos, we've got the map. Especially if you're a local business, 
um, it's important people need to know that if they're new clients, they need to know where you are because if they're you know, 25 miles away, it's not going to be convenient for them. So even just having a map like this helps to increase your conversion on your offers and your content. Um, again, hours on how they can claim the offers and then having reviews as well, which is social proof. Hey, this is real. You're not alone. You're not the first person that's taking advantage of this offer. And then a call to action. Now, putting calls to action throughout the whole piece of content or an offer that you're creating is really important because people will see as much as they need to and then opt in. And so having more buttons is helpful uh, to increase your conversion rate. Okay. Let's go back to here, though. So that's for landing pages. And, and landing pages and sales pages pretty much have the same kind of rules when you're selling in general. Having those different elements is very, very helpful. So we have the um, month here, and on this month calendar, I like to just put very high level types of content. And so typically I'll go through and I'll get three different colored highlighters, and I will highlight each one with the color, so like yellow, pink, and green, for example. And then I will write in there just general dates of things. Like So for example, in, in my calendar I have the the Thursday training, which is today. The week before I had a live stream that was awareness for this. I had another live stream that was awareness for this the, the week before. I had a podcast, which was awareness, a podcast that was awareness. And then maybe I'll have um, posts that are driving people to my planner, which is evaluation. I'll have posts which is driving potential people who, who said, hey, I'm interested in having you do digital marketing services. And those are different kinds of, of content and goals that we're using for each stage of the funnel. So for awareness goals, like for, for myself, which I have my podcast, I have my YouTube channel, I have the different pieces of content that I'm always creating and putting out, trying to attract ultimately what I'm looking for at the bottom of my funnel is for people who want and need digital marketing services to grow their business. Um, so if you're a veterinarian, yours would be having people that bring their dogs in, for example, right? Or their cats or whatever service that you're looking to do. And I would say even getting more refined than that, right? So we're wanting to increase our dental work this month, or we want to increase the number of heartworm treatments that we do this month, or like having that specific of a goal is going to be really important. So figure out one type of, of primary objective that you're going to be doing. It just helps to create a lot more um, clarity around your marketing. It also helps to create uh, marketing that's a lot more ROI measurable, right? If you have like 50 products that you're constantly through all of your channels putting out there, it's going to be like, well, we got you know four new clients, but we have no idea where they came from. And so it just is, is really diluted as far as where things come from. So on this calendar, though, I like to have, again, just the general kind of overview and like to plan things. And then I also like to see, based on, on this kind of content and an overview, does it look like it's too heavy in promotion? Does it look like it's too heavy in awareness? Because that's kind of the two ways that the pendulum swings there, where it's just like super diluted marketing where you're only doing awareness content, but you're not making any money, which is not good for your business, or you're just selling all the time, which is just like the annoying person who has the MLM who's just always like, hey, can I uh, show you something? And you're like, I don't want to talk to you anymore. You're just selling me stuff all the time. Stop trying to sell me stuff all the time. So you have to be both useful, helpful, and then also you know, sell your product. Otherwise, what's the point? So w within that, we have each week. And here's where I actually like to outline the different posts. So for the week, I'll have specific awareness, evaluation, and conversion goals. And so it's sideways so that you can write on it, but you open it up and write on it. And that typically is here where I do the specific post topic plan. So I'll have different videos um, for content or it really just helps if I sit down and batch this out so that I don't have to think about it and then I can layer these on top of each other. We're going to talk about the three plus one strategy that I like to use. So it'll give you some clarity around kind of what to do. It's a pretty simple formula though that lets you figure this out. So once we have that figured out though, as far as what's the, the goal going to be, and I think if you're if you're a, an average business and you're running the business and you're doing marketing, 
but don't try to do too many things. Just try for one offer. What is the offer that I'm going to make this week? What's the kind of content that I can build around this? What kind of content will I actually do? If you're somebody who won't do video because you hate it, don't say, I'm going to make a video that's going to talk about um, you know, this topic. It's not going to be helpful. It's not going to actually get things sold. So say, hey, I'm going to create a blog post or an infographic or I'm going to do a live video, whatever it is you're going to do. And actually set it up and stack it so that you can create segmentation around it. But if you're super busy, you don't have to create content every single day. But it is important that you actually create content once in a while. You can't, unfortunately, you can't get away without creating content these days. So, for example, if you're going to do an offer this week that's going to be, hey, we have a dental special coming out for your dogs. Maybe do a before and after picture of a dog who came in for a cleaning, right? That's a great piece of awareness content. People that engage with that. And um, I was just thinking of Dr. Belinda. Uh, if if you would like an example of this, Dr. Belinda does great examples of cleanings before and after. Um, the only thing is that her patients are usually intubated. And if you do any kind of ads on Facebook where you have like that kind of medical stuff, it doesn't get approved. So you need to make sure that your ads are approvable if you're in the veterinary industry. Um, so that being said, like the before and after, the stark contrast of, of what that looks like is really helpful, right? And it's really related to your offer too. So hey, if you come in, you can get a free dental exam and then $20 towards any procedures that you have done that day. Super relevant and super specific. So our awareness goals could be to create posts regarding dental week on these days. And then the evaluation goals could be um, sign up for our special club right where you have a special that you send out once a week or something and then because that's a, an easy step to take the next step of hey come and sign up for the special and we'll see what offers we're holding each week and then the conversion and retention goals are going to be what are we doing to sell to our current clients and also drive new clients in the door so i would say that labeling this by medium as well is important so having an email go out this day or having content created on this day, having your email list get a, um, a notification about the content that you created this day. Right? So pointing back and reusing as much as you can is great and it helps you to, to stay in front of your clients. Um, so we have campaign trackers. Now this, I don't necessarily suggest that you do every single campaign, especially boosting and, and things like that. But when you are doing bottom of funnel tracking, um, it's great to know kind of what you were thinking going into it, what emotions you were tapping into, um, what the main idea was of it, and having detailed notes about that so that you can improve. Because so many times people that are especially running their own business, they're super busy, and so they just think, it, you know, they're not necessarily thinking about how they set things up. And if it works or it doesn't work, it's hard to know what you were thinking going into it so that you can duplicate that in the future. Actually, I started doing this on all of my ads. Obviously, it's different because I have an ad agency. Um, but it's just amazing at how much my, my marketing improved when I said, here's the emotion that I'm going for behind this. Here's kind of the image that I'm thinking of and being really intentional versus just kind of winging it and saying, like, I'm going to do these ads again. Or, you know, it, it's really been helpful. So we have the detailed ad campaign tracker. And then we have just the advertising tracker. And so this is good for high note. I'd say if you have things that worked well and you, you know that they worked well based on the objective that you had, this just helps you to comp compile those um, and go from there. So having a, a quick reference for your kind of highlight reel is great. And then we have just months. So fill these in and use them based on um, kind of your intents. So we're going to keep keep going here. Let's talk about the three plus one strategy that I like to use. So um, it is kind of annoying to be just talking about the same offer all the time. And that's why I like to use what I call the three plus one strategy. And the three plus one strategy lets you just think about three specific benefits to your post or your, your offer that you have. So let's say I'm going to give you the example of this planner, for example, that I have and created. 
So just keep continuing to say, hey, I created a planner. It's awesome. Sign up for it, right? That just gets annoying. And it's like you're, you don't have a reason to show up over and over again. So I like to do a three-week promotion and then a one-week follow-up after that. So for example, on this, I think about three benefits for the planner that goes back to meeting the needs uh, of my target market. So for example, right, you need to you ever feel like you don't know what to do or what to create. This helps you to get clarity around that. That's need number one, for example. Number two is, are you ever unsure of what your marketing ROI is? It's because you don't have a plan. You need to get a plan and define benefits and define objectives. That's number two. And then number three is save time and get more done. And so figuring out those three benefits that are kind of like pieces of copy that you use for the offer, I can then have each piece of content that I'm creating for that week be built around those specific benefits instead of just constantly saying the same thing over and over again. So, you know, for example, if you're doing dental months for dogs and you're trying to get dental cleanings going on, right, maybe benefit number one is uh, your dog has better smell and breath. Benefit number two is your dog is healthier. And benefit number three is your dog will be able to live longer, for example. And so then each week you have a piece of content that's still built around the offer that you have. So you do promotion up to the offer. You then promote the offer and sell. And then you follow up and say, hey, this offer is ending this week. It's time to make sure that you're actually following up and, and buying these. So it's a really, really easy formula um, that I like to use and it's simple so that you can just kind of layer on each one of these things have, again, targeting people who are engaging with the content that you're producing and then showing them the offer around that. So I hope that this makes sense. If you need in-depth help, um, I'm doing an offer right now that if you go and leave me a review on Amazon right here on this planner. I have three reviews right now. If you leave me a review, send me a screenshot of the review that you sent, I will do a one-on-one -on -one with you to help define your offer, define your content strategy, and help you get this done so it can be custom tailored to exactly what you're doing. Um, so if you're interested in that, all you have to do is leave me a review, screenshot the review that you left, and send it to me. You can send it to brandonbrashears at gmail.com. Um, and be sure to subscribe on YouTube, subscribe to the podcast. If you ever need help,